Hello kiddies and welcome to Techspert Weekly, officially voted YouTube's 57th best weekly tech roundup show of the year by Anne Whittacombe. And this week in a classic case of quantity over quality, we have not just one new segment, but three of the buggers. So strap yourself in and let's kick off with the first. Gaff of the week. <laughs> Now last week some of you more tech savvy punters may have noticed this wee little f up that crept into the show. The Pixel 4a busts typically slick camera tech, a 90hz OLED screen and thank Christ pretty good battery life. No, you dumb bull northern knobber, it's not a 90hz display, it's a 60hz of course. For shame. But fear ye not, I punished myself with 10 bloody Marys and a hot and frantic spot of self-flagellation to make full amends. Anyway, that's how crap I was in last week's show, now let's crack on with this week's show so I can once again talk a whole load of bollocks and stand around looking confused like an old man at a bus stop in his undercrackers. Expert Weekly! Now it's not really been much for a week for technology launches, mostly because all of the technology has melted in the insane heat. And speaking of which, if you really don't like me all that much, just go check out my Oppo Watch unboxing from yesterday. I kid you not, the studio got up to around 35, 36 degrees, so it was actually like a figurative sauna in here. Seriously, my face was just a mask of suffering, even more so than during Sunderland's last four seasons of so-called football. Now, but the biggest news this week has been a Microsoft Surface Duo phone, it's finally available for pre-order and it's actually going to be hitting the US next month, September, uh, for a sphincter clenching price of $1,400. If you're not familiar with the Surface Duo, you probably just forgot it because it launched at the end of last year. It's basically an Android phone that folds out like a book in snazzy fashion with dual 5.6 inch AMOLED screens tucked away inside. Now, sadly, those specs aren't as strong as many rival premium blowers. You've got the Snapdragon 855 chipset as the phone was designed and launched last year before the fresher 865 became available. Available. You've also got a tiny 3500 milliamp battery in there, which possibly won't cope too well with two massive OLED displays. But as they say, only time will tell if the Surface Duo turns out to be the mutts nuts or just plain nuts. Hopefully I'll be bringing you some hands-on action really soon. Also this week, Xiaomi launched a transparent TV. So when you turn it off, it is actually completely clear, which sounds good if you're literally gonna build it into the wall and use it as a window. Otherwise, it just means you're gonna see whatever crap is lumped behind it. So yeah, I don't know about you, but behind my TV, it's not just a mess of cables. It's also become an kind of impromptu storage space for all the stuff that I don't wanna throw out but I don't really want it out and about either. Like this is the back of my telly this morning, an absolute crap dump. And rather shockingly, I don't want to see that when I switch my TV off. You might as well just flash up a big picture of a hairy flatulent arse or something like that. But anyhow, before we trudge our way into the absolute live and joy that is viewers comments, it's time for the second of our new segments, which I've appropriately titled, I like free stuff. Give me free shit, I like free shit, give me free shit please. Now like all self-entitled YouTubers, I got into this gig not just because I love the sound of my own f***ing voice, but also because I really want people to send me free shit in the post. And the best thing I've had arrive at here at Expert Towers this month is definitely this very thing that the camera is uh, sat on right now. Let me just detach this bad boy. Oh, nasal shot. That's not good. Need to get the old uh, scissors on those later. Oh Christ, it's like the f***ing rainforest in there. This bad boy here is a tripod, which also just happened to be my nickname back in college. To be specific, it's an iFootage Gazelle TC9, which you can grab right now from iFootageGear.com. And it's a durable wee bugger, so it's ideal for outdoor use, with a three-stage metal buckle leg lock. And let me tell you, it took me a few attempts to get that one right. And it can be set super high or right down at ground level to capture whatever you need. But the best part is definitely that quick release design, which means you're going to whip it off in a jiffy, and the same for reattaching. I've been using the Gazelle with the Komodo K7 tripod head and it's been more enjoyable than a custard bath with Charlie's thereon. So big thanks to iFootage for sending in the Gazelle and the Komodo for me to check out. Definitely highly recommend them to any button photographers or anyone who wants to shoot a bit of video wherever they roam. We've got links down in the descriptions. Right, time is seriously cracking on, so let's get jiggy with viewer comments. Viewer comments. Uh, let's start with such joy ambition finds. It says, having watched Chris's Samsung Note 20 Ultra unboxing, I find I am now spontaneously and unexpectedly imagining a very dubious, not safe for work Godzilla style cage match starring Uncle Spurt versus the Mega Slapper. And let me tell you, I have gone tour to tour with some Mega Slappers in my time, usually in some of the nightclubs, and it has never ended well. And that thing absolutely terrifies me anyway. It'll probably just swing on down, crack me one in the nads, and that would be it. Game over, man. Uh, Chris says, 
any chance you could talk any faster? Uh, touche, sir. Uh, Jedi Polar Bear says, the anime they showed on TV was Yurotsuka Doji, Legend of the Overfiend. Oh yeah, definitely saw that one at like 2am on probably Channel 4, because they showed some messed up shit on Channel 4, let me tell you. But yeah, Yurotsuka Doji, so many tentacles up to nefarious deeds. I never looked the same way at an octopus after that one, that's for sure. And I've certainly never eaten calamari either as well. You've got no idea where it's been. Uh, Jeepers, he continues. And uh, yeah, Jeepers is right, my friend. Uh, next up, Darren says, great video as always, but no idea how you find the time to do Texpert and manage the Belgian national football team. Now you see, after last week's show, I was fully anticipating comments like this. And so I've actually prepared a jingle for a fresh new segment, which I like to call, which crap celebrity do I look like this week? Which crap celebrity do I look like this week? I've got to say, Roberto Martinez is actually quite a flattering one. He's a bit of a stud, really, isn't he? It's like a lot more flattering than the number taker anyway let's face it basically if i wasn't northern and i didn't have this horrifically pale skin that just ignited and burst into flames at the merest hint of sunshine then yeah i can sort of see it and that was which crap celebrity do i look like this week which crap celebrity do i look like this week uh, next up francis morto uh, says hello uncle spurt whatever happened to Rakombu? Uh, well, that is a very long story, but long story short, basically, uh, the company that owned Recombi was bought out, and it's now actually owned by Trusted Reviews, funnily enough. And spoiler alert, there is actually going to be a bit of a resurrection of the Recombi YouTube channel, this time hosted by annoyingly fresh-faced youths with far too much hair. So stay tuned for more on that. Uh, next up, Rob Page says, Motorola seem to be taking their time announcing their next device, don't they? It feels like weeks since the Moto G 5G came out. Well, I'm really glad it feels like a long time for you, uh, Rob, mate. For me, personally, it still feels like I'm stuck in some sort of mobile purgatory where I'm cursed to review an infinite cycle of Motorola smartphones until the very fabrics of space and time are rendered and we all end up combining into some sort of horrific space gloop. Or at least you live in hope. Uh, next up, Sam says, Hey, Techspert, tell us your favourite games. Really curious, does doesn't matter new or old. Uh, well, my favourite genres are first-person shooters and adventure games as well. I'm a massive geek for those old point-and-click adventure titles, even before point-and-click, like some Zork and stuff I used to love. Definitely a massive fan of the old LucasArts ones, your Deer the Tentacles, Sam and Max, all that classic stuff, and Gabriel Knight, all that shenanigans. Um, I actually started an adventure game review channel back before I started Techspert. Uh, I only put about five videos on it. This is how dedicated I was to the cause, unfortunately. But occasionally, when I've got a bit of time, do like an adventure game roundup uh, here on Expert as well. So if you want to see one of my favorites, go check out my, I think it's like the most f***ed up adventure games of all time video, which I'll try and remember to put a link up here to, uh, if I've forgotten. Blah, sorry. That one was a lot of fun to do. Uh, next up, Sean says, is that grey in that partial beard? Yes, I'm old. All right. Yes, I get it. Thank you. Uh, Nick says, hey, Chris, will the Oppo Reno 4 Pro come to the UK? I want it. Dot, dot, dot now unfortunately there's no official word from oppo on uh, what is going to be launching in the uk in the imminent future though they are pretty much due a new phone launch uh, which reminds me though i still have to review the oppo a72 which is still sat over there god damn and next up stew ben 11 says idols uh, got fond memories of being booted out of there more than once on thursday nights while i was doing my hnd at the uni and for those of you who missed it last week idols was basically the best bar in sunderland you'd go there you'd get your one pound bottle of red pig which would turn your piss blood red and probably do all kinds of horrific things to your insides. But you know what? It's a quid. Who's going to complain? Have you a bit of a dance to Tiffany and all those old classics? But out of curiosity, what did you actually do to get chucked out of idols? Because I've seen some pretty crazy going on in that place the kind of stuff that would get you the death sentence in most countries that still have it and yet apparently wasn't eviction worthy for the idols bouncers so definitely interested to have a follow-up on that one and sticking on the subject of Sunderland because why not Stephen says I married a Mackham in the glass center that's pretty pretty awesome is that part of some premium ticket package or something pay an extra fiver you get a Mackham bride and a free Cornish pasty and a coke in the canteen or something and better make this the last one because seriously running out of time now uh, King on Cage says, please spurt some hot sticky tech news all over me regarding the Yazoo Zenfone 7. Um, well, as much as I love to ejaculate tech-based shenanigans all over you fine folk, unfortunately there's been no official word from Asus on the Zenfone 7 just yet. I did check to see if there were any decent rumours or anything, but most of it seems to be the usual internet bollocks. Uh, but stay tuned, hopefully should be launching in the next sort of couple of months. And hopefully it'll actually come to Blighty, unlike uh, the ROG Phone 3, which would be really handy. Um, so that's it. Thank you so much to everyone who left comments last week. Really, uh, 
massive apologies if I did manage to get to yours, but please do bung your comments down below. Unfortunately, there will not be a show next week. Even Uncle Spur has to take a break. Occasionally, I've got to go off and polish all of my many YouTube trophies. Best ball northern twat who does tech stuff, etc, etc. But don't worry, we'll be back the following week where I'll answer all your comments. Feel free to tell me which other crap celebrities I happen to slightly resemble and we'll be able to resurrect that little segment again. And as always, have yourselves a lovely weekend, people. Cheers, everyone. Love you.